Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Frank Fryer. I am The Frank Fryer, a.k.a. Brother Nicholas, soon to be Father Nicholas. And I wanted to uh, begin this video with a thank you. I had a big push in terms of um, social media campaign yesterday to increase the subscribers to my YouTube channel. Um, and I had some good turnout and some very kind words and, um, and some very supportive things were said to me in private. And, and I'm a man that values speaking the words of thanks. To give a thank you to somebody that does you a kindness, whether or not you ask for it, but to always say thank you. And I want to take this few seconds at the beginning of this video just to thank you all who have subscribed. And I ask if you continue to like my content, please share it with your friends, your families, your relatives. You know, I hope from my, my vlog here that it'll be a nourishing source for people's lives. I was raised in rural Michigan. It's hard to get to daily mass, even if the parish does offer daily mass. So having something on social media like this, I think, might help people in those sort of situations that don't have those opportunities like we do here in New York City to find daily masses. So it's an opportunity to make sure that people that are on the journey can always find a place where they can stop, rest, and get some spiritual nourishment. And to springboard off that concept of Thanksgiving, I wanted to talk a little bit about community because that's really what I'm trying to do here with the Frank Fryer, my, my Facebook page, my podcast, my website, my vlog here on YouTube is build a community that has a foundation, of course, in Jesus Christ, who is being understood by me through my Catholic faith and my Carmelite spirituality and identity. And community is a very important thing for Carmelites. Uh, even though we were originally founded by mendicants, our rule called us to daily communion, which was something really unheard of at the time. So it was a chance that all these men that were seeking to be sort of hermits in the deserts, like the Desert Fathers of old, would come together and have to deal with each other. And one of the biggest writings during my years in formation about community life was from John of the Cross. Here's a nice book. It's a little beat up, but that's because I read it a lot, and books are supposed to beat up because you're supposed to read them and nourish them and work with them and wrestle with them and etc. But... Um, it's the Collected Works of St. John of the Cross. So you can just search for that and find it on Amazon, etc. But um, in the spiritual counsels in this text, John of the Cross is writing to young religious coming in. And he says this. He writes in the spiritual counsels. To practice a second counsel, which concerns mortification, and profit by it, you should engrave this truth on your heart, and is that you have not come to the monastery for any other reason than to be worked on and tried in virtue. You are like the stone that must be chiseled and fashioned before being set in the building. Thus you should understand that those who are in the monastery are craftsmen placed there by God to mortify you by working and chiseling at you. Now he's writing to religious and when building up a Carmelite community that is pretty straightforward understanding but I think his concepts and his words and his, his understanding can go even beyond that because we are all the baptized Christians I'm talking to specifically here building up the kingdom of God you know we are the rich stones the that help to craft a, a strong structure that can be an invitation to others to come and dwell with the Lord. And to fully understand who we are in this life of faith, to fully understand our Christian identity, to fully, to fully see who we are called to be, we can't do that without community. No person is an island. We need others. Another passage in the Spiritual Council, John of the Cross, uses that craftsmanship, but he looks at it from a perspective of an artisan. Each person is a beautiful statue that God wishes to share with the world. The community in which we have around us helps that beautiful statue to come forth from that block of stone. It's not an easy process, of course. Sometimes people are harsh with their words. Sometimes they're harsh with their deeds and their actions. Sometimes, as the artisan, we can be harsh to others. And it's these little chisels, these little breaks, these little things that if we understand them and allow them to be shaped and, and sanded down by the grace of God, 
we can begin to grow and allow ourselves to incorporate them into who we are so we can become more fully ourselves, a Christian fully alive, as some of the church fathers of the early church spoke about. Community is not an easy thing. It's not supposed to be an easy thing. You know, we are all sinners. My article coming out here soon deals with that topic. And we can't avoid that. And reconciliation in the Catholic Church, when we go to confession, we're reconciled with God, with our neighbors, and with ourself. There's a three-part healing that occurs. And a part of that growth is penance and owning what we've done and helping to build something better. So being open to the community around us, not making yourself a pariah, that's not what I'm talking about, but when somebody says something harsh to you, instead of crafting a story in your mind or in your heart that tears down the other because of your own woundedness, sit with it and see if there's some truth there and say, Lord, shine your light here so I can understand this better. And if it's totally off the mark, may your grace heal my woundedness in this moment. Community is so important. One of the first things Christ did after he came back from the desert was to call the 12 apostles. From the beginning, he wanted people around him. He wanted community. He also needed times of silence, but the community was always there. And then when Paul started to persecute the Christians, Jesus appeared to him and said, Why are you persecuting me? He identified that close with the community. So, as I started this video with saying thanks for the people that are already subscribed, um, please help me sort of continue my social media ministry and help me build up this community. For those that may feel cast aside, that may feel wounded, that may feel broken, that may feel upset, that may feel angry, all these sort of things, the whole spectrum of, of harm that rests in the human heart. So hopefully, as we journey together, we can aid those in the world to help them grow in the beauty that rests in them because when God made humanity, he said all of creation was very good. And even in our sinfulness, God doesn't take back his word. He called us good. That's the foundation. We are good. We get off the mark. That's what sin's about, being off the mark. But we can't ignore the fact that God has called us good. He has made us to be a beautiful creature, a creation in the world, so his glory and his love and his mercy can be shined out for all people. So thank you all for being with me today. This is a little bit of a longer video. Um, I hope if you found my words nourishing for yourselves, you can continue to enjoy my other content by visiting my website, www.thefrankfriar.com. Also at the end of the video, you'll find links to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You'll also find links to my other videos and you'll find a link to my website popping up on the screen. Remember, you'll always be in my prayers and if there's something you need specifically in terms of the prayers, email me through my website and I will raise them up in prayer in the morning during my holy hour. Thank you for being with me today. Know that I'm holding you with love in my heart, and I ask you to please continue to pray for me. Thank you, and God bless.